Okay, so again, recap. Those two points will span R2 because they result in a unique solution for both scalar values A and B. Now, let's go on to the fundamental theorem of vectors in 3-space. Well, any two non-collinear, non-zero vectors will span a, a plane in R3. Now, this is exactly the same concept in R2, but to span a plane, think of your hand on a piece of paper. Now, the plane that is defined by the two the plane that is defined by the two vectors. Okay, this is the plane that is defined by the two vectors when you span a plane. Now, vectors that are coplanar are said to be linearly dependent. So these two vectors that span the plane are linear dependent of each with each other. That is that when you take any two, three vectors and add them together, the result will be the zero vector. Or you take any two vectors and add the th and it equals the third vector, that also means that they are linearly dependent. So where u, v, and w are vectors, and a, b, and c are real numbers that don't equal zero. You can rewrite this as, just let me show you, also where you have vector a, for example, times, sorry, not vector a, but some scalar a times vector u plus some scalar b times vector v is equal to vector w. That also means that they are linearly dependent. You can rewrite them as a, uh, as a uh, linear statement, as an addition statement, for example. Now, please don't get hung up on this a, b, and c. These scalar values can have any value you choose to have them. They can be a, they can be, for example, m, and n. We can use any letter to represent, any two letters to represent scalar values. The whole goal here, though, is to understand what spanning a plane is. So let's go back to that hand picture. I can take this hand, for example, and move it around. It is on a piece of paper. Think of this piece of paper as a plane. And this hand spans across the plane because all of the individual fingers, thinking of them as vectors, will span across the plane because they're non-zero and non-collinear. Now, let's look at another example. All right, now, looking here on this, think of these as different sheets of paper. So there's a sheet of paper here, another sheet of paper here, and another sheet of paper here. I'm going to take that hand. That idea is this hand can be on any of these sheets of paper. I can move this hand to be on any of these sheets of paper. So if it's lying on this piece of paper, that hand spans on that piece of paper. Not on any of the others, but only on that piece of paper. And I can move that hand to go on any of these spots over here. So this piece of paper, or this piece of paper. The idea here is that the hand span goes across one plane, one sheet of paper, and anywhere across there, any two vectors will span across the third. Again, as long as they're non-collinear and uh, non-zero vectors. All right, back to the previous question. All right, so let's look at an example. Are the vectors the first one and the second one and third one coplanar. So do they span across a plane? Do they lie on the same plane? Coplanar means that are these vectors linearly dependent? So we can set it up so that the vectors, one vector plus the second vector plus the third vector equals zero. That's one way to write it. Again, coplanar means are they linearly dependent. Now, I'm finding that a lot of people are having hard time with this. So let's look at this question in a different way. Can the two of them be written as a linear combination of the third one, 
That's the question you can ask yourself. So let's retry this. Okay, we're going to rewrite this question so that if it's true that they are all coplanar, would mean that a scalar value times the first vector plus a scalar value times the second vector will actually have to equal the third vector because, again, if they're coplanar, they all lie on the same plane. To lie on the same plane, they must be linearly dependent of each other. So we can write it as a linear statement. So what does that mean? Let's take all the scalar values and the i, j's, and k's and combine them. So these are the values for the i, the value for the j, and the value for the k. All right. So we have equations 1, 2, and 3. From here, we can only use two equations to solve for two variables. The third equation is used to check the values. So let's use equation number 1 and 2. And looking at equation number 1, I want to eliminate the ends. So I'm going to take 4 times equation number 1. And for equation number 2, I'm going to just take it the way it is, and we're going to eliminate the ends by adding lines 4 and 5. Lines 4 and 5 can be added to give you m, 8m plus negative 7m is equal to m equals negative 17. Now we're going to substitute this value into equation number 1. Remember, we're only working with the first two equations. So only with 1 and 2, only these two. The third one we're going to use as a check. So we're going to sub it into equation number 1. And we find out that the end value is 30. So we have two unique values. We have a unique value for m and a unique value for n, meaning a non-zero and um, and they're real numbers, so we're good here. What do we do now? Well, we have to check. We have to check in equation number 3. So we have our left side and right side of equation number 3, or line number 3, that's our third equation. And we're going to take 2 times m plus n, and we're going to check that is it equal the right side. Well, folks, it does equal the right side, and because it does, that means that these vectors are coplanar. Now, why are they coplanar? The vectors are coplanar because they are linearly dependent of each other, uh, with each other, so that we can take any two of those vectors and add it to give you the third vector, multiplied obviously by some sort of scalar. All right, let's look at example two. All right, example number two. Given the vectors 2, 7, negative 1, 5, 3, negative 2 span a plane, so you're told that these two span a plane, does 9, 11, 2 lie on the same plane? So here's another way to ask, are the, are the three vectors coplanar? Do they lie on the same plane? Well, here you're specifically told that these two for sure span the plane. Does the third one fit on the plane of those two? Now, if you were to draw them out, it's not easy to draw, and there's no way you can actually see whether it does or doesn't. So, we need to prove this mathematically. Proving it mathematically means that I can take some scalar value a times it times the verse, first vector. Now, guys, remember that if you're given, let's say, a vector a, you don't want to use a scalar value a to confuse yourself. So what I recommend is that you use either scalars m, n, and p, a, b, and c, all depending on what the vector names are. Change the scalar names so they don't match the vector name. Anyways, let's keep going. a plus b, uh, so a times the first vector plus b times the second vector on the spanning vectors, does that equal the third vector? That's the question that needs to be told. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need to set the equations up, folks. So here are the three equations. And these are all based on the previous question. 
And based on that A, A, B, and C, so we're going to have 2A plus 5B equals 9, 7A minus 3B equals 11, and negative A plus 2B equals 2. That's what we're writing. So that's what this statement has. Now, you, we have two unknowns with three equations. Use only two of those equations. In this case, we're going to use 1 and 3. The hardest part is students have a hard time figuring out. So 1 is 2a plus 5b equals 9, so that's equation number 1. And 2 times 3, so we're taking equation number 3 and multiplying by 2. We're not going to go with our stayed tried and true, just equations 1 and 2. We can use any combination of these, okay? So we're using 1 and 3, and we're going to solve for a and b. We find out that b is equal to 13 over 9. Now we're going to sub this into equation number 3 to find our a value, and our a value is going to be 8 over 9. So what do we do now? Well, we need to check these two answers that we got for a and b into equation number 2. The reason why we're using number 2 is remember that we used 1 and 3 to solve. So 1 and 3 were used to solve for a and b. We're using 2 to check our answer. And we do that, we're checking it, and lo and behold, when we check it, we find out that the left side does not equal the right side. And because of that, that tells us, because the left side doesn't equal the right side, folks, that this vector does not lie on the plane. And therefore, the three vectors do not lie in the same plane. They are not coplanar. All right, hopefully this makes sense, folks. This is the end of the video. Have a great night. Take care.